for the second sprint of the season. The first one, that was in Konya in Italy, and we're back here for the first classic sprint because Konya was a freestyle affair, which Katerina Neumannova won in the women's division, and Christian Zorzi of Italy won the men's race. Well, as you can see, it's a pretty nice day, or you will in a moment. It's uh, a little bit chilly, and the humidity is quite high for this race on compact snow, and uh, the weather pretty sunny, and a good crowd out to really cheer on the world's best racers. It's a classic race today, which means that Bentascari is definitely here as the favourite today, looking for yet another 100 World Cup points. At the moment, it's Katerina Neumannova who leads the overall World Cup race table, but only by 10 points. So a real chance here today with uh, Neumannova not on duty to actually for Scori to take the advantage. Well, the course is uh, quite tough. There's a big climb, as you just saw. It's a loop of uh, 1,500 metres, and they do it just the once. Well, Bentascori was uh, fastest in uh, training, and she's in the first of the semi-finals that we're going to see against her teammate, Hilda Pedersen, the world sprint uh, silver medalist, Cathy Sundquist, and then Milane Terrio, who's again another very good racer in uh, classic style. Here's uh, Hilda, the 37-year-old Norwegian mother of two, who's having her lifetime's best season at the moment. She's sixth overall in the World Cup. And then uh, Caddy Sundquist. Peja Maninen, of course, is the world sprint champion at freestyle, but she's uh, still not fit enough to resume duty here. And Benta Skori wearing number one as the fastest qualifier in that uh, black outfit. You know the Norwegians normally wear red for the uh, cross-country, the uh, middle and long-distance races, but they're all in black uh, with a little white, as you can see, for the sprint. So, uh, five, Becky Scott, uh, Milane Terrio, I should say. Then Hilda Pedersen. So this promises to be uh, quite interesting. Katy Sundquist and Milane Terrio very equally matched in terms of their qualification time. Scorey way out ahead of uh, just about everybody. If you were with us over the past weekend, you'll uh, know of the demolition job that she did in Davos over 10 kilometers in classic style. One of the best ever performances we've seen from uh, Bente. And she'll look to uh, dominate this race right from the beginning. This is where she can pick up 100 points in her quest to uh, win the overall title. In the sprint division last year, she was the champion, is the champion. She beat Peja Maninen as they go up the climb for the first time. Hilda Pedersen at the back there. And it's Caddy Sundquist who's giving closest chase at the moment to Benta Scori. Really nice day, and you can see the twists and turns here. And the time's quite interesting. Bentascori in uh, qualifying put up 3 minutes 57.36 for 1,500 metres. Now, compare that as a time to 1,500 metres in track and field. It's not too different. And think about this, that Bentascori is going uphill and down dale as she goes round this 1,500 metre loop. And they're really spread out in Indian file. First two, of course, to qualify through for the final. And at the moment, Bentascori, well in charge. Just has this remorseless, relentless rhythm. And she's in the form of her life at the moment. Caddy Sundquist, then uh, after that, uh, Milene Terrio wearing five. And then just at the back, Hilda Pedersen just laboring. Look at the gaps opening up now. And uh, she's completely out of on her own. Really, the only interest is who's going to come second. Caddy Sundquist just uh, almost uh, making a mistake there. Belaine uh, Terrio's close enough if she does. But uh, Scori just taking absolutely no chances. Bender Scori last year, three victories in the uh, sprint races. 
the Engelberg Classic Sprint, also the Salt Lake City Freestyle and the Asiago Classic Sprint a year ago. So trying to retain her title here. Asiago, well, it's sort of uh, northwest of Venice on the way to Bolzano near to Belluna. Patty Sundquist uh, still in second place. She uh, hails from Cuopio, where, of course, this season's competitions all began. So this is uh, really comfortable for Bente. Patty Sundquist really now looking to make second place around Milan. Terrio untidy, didn't really anticipate that turn. She went way out to her left and lost even more time. Hilda Pedersen trying to close on her at the moment. But Caddy uh, Sundquist putting in a determined move here to make sure that she does secure second place. And you can see she's opened up a margin which I don't think Milan Terrio is going to close on. So this is very straightforward in this first semi-final. Of course, the uh, sprint season will uh, really start to warm up after the Ramsau Mass Starts races. We've got Garmisch Partenkirchen on the 27th of December and then Salzburg on the 29th of December. And uh, both of those will be freestyle sprints. Garmisch one in the Olympic Stadium, the Salzburg one in the center of the city. As uh, Bentascori comes home, and you can see 4.02.6, not as fast as qualifying. Sundquist uh, comfortable in second place. And uh, for the other two, they'll go into the small final, Milain Terrio and then Hilda Pedersen. The order really never changed from the moment the gun was fired, and uh, Scori comfortably through to the final. Difficult to see who's going to beat her today. But there it is, confirmation. Norway, Finland, Canada, and Norway again. And it was the instant move up the first climb that really gave Scori the big advantage. And some discussion amongst the uh, sprinting and cross-country fraternity about the length of these sprints. Is 1,500 to longer distance uh, does it make it too tactical as opposed to a full out sprint if you've got any thoughts on that we'd love to hear them eurosport.com as ever into club eurosport for your messages so here we go for the uh, second lineup viola bauer for germany been skiing really well recently viola and uh, also becky scott for canada really likes uh, sprinting so let's watch out for her she was third fastest in qualification then uh, Tina Bai for Norway. Not sure how she's going to get on here. This might be a little too sharp, but she's done well to get into the semis. And Petra Magic, who's having a purple patch, tall and powerful. And uh, Magic's not yet into the top 15 of the World Cup points, but she's a really gutsy racer. Ninth last week over 10,000 meters. That was a really good result. And she got one other really good result in the Konya 5-kilometer classic when uh, she really surprised a lot of people finishing an excellent seventh so let's look for Majic to uh, really try and put some pace to this because she was the second fastest in qualifying 405.76 that was eight seconds slower than Scori but this should be a little bit more competitive so Majic second fastest going up there the other three in line Becky Scott uh, next to you there, closest to you on picture, trying to take second place 14, that's Tina Bai she's the slowest of the four on qualification time and uh, Viola Bauer of uh, Germany so Macic already establishing herself at the head of affairs uh, when the snow isn't here this is a golf course by the way And nicely aerodynamically tucked down there to maximize the speed she earns then on the downhill. Becky Scott uh, chasing in second place, but she hasn't made it her own yet. Once again, it's the first two through to the final, and the final means you get big points and most of the money. 
100 points for the winner, 80 for the second, 60 for the third, 50 for the fourth. And uh, Becky, who's opened up quite promisingly, now 16th in the overall World Cup rankings. In the sprint at Konya, the freestyle sprint, she finished an excellent fifth. That's her best placing of the season so far. In terms of the uh, sprint championship last year, she was down in 17th place, including a very important third place at Salt Lake City in the, on the Olympic sprint course at uh, Soldier Hollow. So uh, maybe that's something to bear in mind, that Becky Scott will be just that little bit more competitive when it's uh, freestyle skating. So uh, Matic trying to hold off the pack. Becky Scott now beginning to close the gap up a little bit. A little bit more fluent, a little more rhythmical now. The drive is on, and uh, she's burning off the other two behind. And at the moment, uh, coming up there, Tina Bai trying to uh, close on Viola Bauer. Fight on for third place, but uh, it's not consequential. Majic skiing really well at the moment. Really a difference uh, this season. Coming up to her 22nd birthday. Celebrates that on the 22nd of December. The Slovenian who leads at the moment. Becky Scott just staying on the inside. Just closing up a little bit. And now uh, the battle for third place. Viola Bau just ahead of Tina Bai. But nothing much in it now. And what they want to do now is just make sure that they qualify for the final by not using any more energy than they have to. Remember that uh, to get through to the final they will have done a time trial and a warm-up, done the qualification, then the quarter-finals, then into the semi-finals and the finals. So although it's a sprint race, what you have to remember is that these women will have raced 1,500 metres four times, those who actually get into the final. So that's uh, a pretty hard-working day. So Macic, uh, like Skori, gun to tape, and the uh, time... Very similar to Scory. Becky Scott of Canada takes second place. And will it be Viola Bauer or it's Viola Bauer who goes third then ahead of Tina Boy. So into the final will go Scory and uh, Majic with uh, Becky Scott and Katy Sundquist.